Hi guys, welcome to the special edition of Adopt Nikola with one and only Grandmaster Sergei Karyakin. Uh, thank you for being here. It's a great honor to be here with Grandmaster Karyakin and also thank you. Uh, back for with the uh, International Master Eric Rosen, who is actually one of the people responsible for me to coming to Twitch and to WFM Maria Emilianova Fotochess, who is actually largely responsible for arranging this match. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Nicola. It's Thank a pleasure. You, yeah, great to Hi, be here. Hi, Eric. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Hello, Sergey. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I want to say a couple of things before we pl pledge into the match. Uh, you know, there is a very small club of people who played a match for World Championship since 2010 for the past 10 years. That club is probably the most ex exclusive club of all chess players. It's basically Anand Topalov, Geifund, then Magnus won the championship in 2013, Sergei played for World Championship in 2016, and Fabiano Caruana played in 2018. That's a grand total of six people that played this. It's as exclusive club in chess world as you can have. And the, the biography, the curriculum vitae of my today's opponent is absolutely fascinating. He was an international master at 11. He was a grand master at 12. He was a rapid world champion in 2012. He was a blitz world champion in 2016. Uh, you know, I'm basically in awe and honored to be in the same virtual chessboard, virtual room with Sergey Kayakin. So welcome, Sergey Kayakin. Sergey, I am <laughs> hoping to we will be able to see you more on Twitch. And this is actually one of the ideas behind this match. So. Yes, my, maybe it will be my first step. <laughs> Very good. Switch. Very good. And Open Field Media, for the record, is, uh, you know, uh, shout out to the sponsors for the match. Open Field Media is sponsoring this match. And Open Field Media has basically is more than happily sponsor any match that Grandmaster Karyakin wants to play in the future. And we're actually going to work on it um, later and with, uh, with Maria. Also, a huge shout out to international master Eric Rosen, who doesn't need any introduction. He is Twitch royalty. He is, has his YouTube channel basically uncovered for me in back in 2018, the how much chess has advanced in the last uh, last couple of years, in the last three or four years, with the advent of Twitch and YouTube and online playing. So, thank you, Eric, for agreeing to commentate this match. Oh, it's it's really a pleasure. Yeah, I, I didn't know that uh, I was one of the, the people who inspired you to, to get into Twitch. So Absolutely. It's an honor. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, and also, by the way, uh, Eric, congratulations on 200,000 uh, YouTube subscribers that you that you hit recently. Oh, thanks so much. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's been exploding recently. Have to have to probably thank the Queen's Gambit film for uh, making chess so popular. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. I appreciate Very it. Very impressive. Thank you. All right. So uh, without uh, much ado, the, you guys, uh, just to summarize the adoption format, it's 10 games, one, uh, uh, one attempt at adoption. Basically, if I draw one game, I win the match, which very frankly, according to the ELO, this, the difference here is uh, I have 4% chances. But I'll give it a puncher's choice. I use Chuck Webner, who once knocked down Muhammad Ali as my uh, as my role model, and we will see what happened. At any rate, it doesn't matter. It's very great and a great honor to have Sergey Karyakin on in my channel here, and I have already I already feel like that's a huge victory. Okay. So uh, the way this works is you guys should be able to hear commentary by Eric and Maria. I am going to disconnect. Uh, I'm going to take my headphones off so I don't hear the commentary. And I already see a challenge from Sergey. And I think we are basically ready to play. But before we proceed, I just want to give a huge shout out to Alessia Santeramo, who is here in chat, to Lile Koridze to Lali, to I'm a shy guy, to Twitch Let's Go, and all these guys who have supported my chess uh, 
route or chess story or chess quest over the past past year plus it has been a great road and uh, we're gonna have to do it and thank you alessia for subscribing anyway i'm very looking very very much looking forward to this match all right guys time to start wish me luck uh, i will i will accept the challenge now ah uh, yes uh, sergey can you mute i i think you are not using the the headphones right um, no, no, I'm not. Uh, can you just mute oh. your computer or lower the sound if it's fine for you to play on uh, yeah, yeah. Without, without the sounds on okay. board? Okay, fantastic. And then you can put it back on after the game so we can talk a little bit between the games. All right. Yeah. Okay, um, we are ready to go. I'm going to accept yep. the challenge. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Okay, good luck. Okay, okay, so they can't hear us, correct? I hope I hope not. Hopefully not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not that we can really help Sergey here, but uh, of course we don't want to 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 have any reason for anyone to suspect that we were biased against him, right? <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> okay, so I see the the first game is underway. Looks like uh, looks like a bishop's opening from from Sergey. Actually, didn't get a chance to ask Nicola how much he prepared for this. Um, um, without asking him, I can tell you that uh, Nicola okay. is always thoroughly prepared, um, and it's it's really impressive how much. Obviously, he is a busy uh, businessman and has a family and supports all of us on Twitch. Uh, mm -hmm. Watches watches uh, the streams all the time mm. so at the same time he always finds time to prepare for the match and this match was planned only six six days ago and he also had an adoption match on sunday mm. against La laura onuk and he managed to avoid that adoption by winning the game five if i'm not mistaken uh, and then also prepared for this one so i'm sure well, that's, that uh, there will be I some mean... yep that's, I guess, a good start for him. But uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'd be able to avoid adoption against uh, against Karyakin. Um, <laughs> Do you think you can adopt Nicola? Well, Nicola has beaten me a few times just in uh, in like kind of friendly but competitive games on stream. Um, so I don't know. I, I would have to take it very seriously to to be able to adopt him. Um, now he's definitely. Uh, Definitely a like good knowledgeable player, but it'll be interesting to see how like Sergey uh, deals with him. Um, and so far, I've I like the opening choice from White, just kind of uh, a, a nice stable sort of Vienna. Oh, what we call this like Vienna Gambit type thing, but not really a Gambit. Um, a lot of potential for White to attack on the King side in uh, in the middle game. So. Uh, do you think Sergey will castle alongside and then go like g4, g5? It's possible. Um, I mean, white, uh, white usually has a hard time castling kingside in this position, right? Because mm -hmm. it's bishop uh, controlling g1. Um, I've seen cases where white just leaves a king in the center oh, and okay. then storms. Um, but bishop b4, I don't, uh, not entirely sure about. Uh, the bishop was just so nice on, uh, mm -hmm. uh, on but of diagonal. course knight a four is always possible to mm. to to try to trade it unless black will play something like a six and hide it on a seven, which yeah, it's a very makes typical idea. Sense. Yeah, yeah, it's such a good bishop on this diagonal. But you know what uh, Sergey is allowing here is bishop takes c three and then just kind of H6 casually walking and... into having triple pawns. Yeah, but also immediately h6 and g5 is coming and Sergei will have to take on f6 because otherwise he's dropping on e4. Um, h6, g5, there, there is on passant. Mm, f takes g6. Yes, that's... But that's maybe it's that still I a positional about. idea. Yeah, but you, you will leave the e4 pawn uh, completely alone. So I like queen d3 because it reinforces e4... Reinforces c3. But there, 
he could have taken on c3 again, which probably already becomes mm -hmm. dangerous since uh, Nicola decided to castle alongside because you don't want to expose b file against the <laughs> board blitz champion. Yeah, you have to and be careful. I, I I do like the way Nicola is playing. Like he hasn't um, he's simplifying. He hasn't cracked. He's he's playing solidly. Mm -hmm. uh, he's he is spending more time. Um, I like his expression here. I don't think we've seen Beth Harmon do that uh, that pose, like both arms over the head. But... No, no. <laughs> he also said that he's uh, wearing his luckiest hat. Mm. Uh, yeah, Nicola has a lot of hats, and we've seen him changing hats during the same adoption match. Are, are you a hat person? Do you wear hats like in over the board chess? No, no, no I, I don't either. I feel like, well, I feel like no hat uh, has a, the size like comfortable enough for my head. So mm -hmm. I just feel very uncomfortable wearing it unless I need it to, to be warm which obviously you it have has to, to serve a practical use yeah and in Russia we fashion. have a lot of a lot of practical use mm -hmm. like that uh, but yeah it just feels a bit weird and you cannot really see around you but uh, on the other hand I can understand over the board you don't want to like uh, see much stuff going on around you maybe it helps you focus it does limit your field of vision maybe it sometimes prevents you from looking at your opponent which could be useful mm -hmm. Of course, um, these days, these days uh, you need some other type of hat or rather <laughs> face uh, covering. But that's another story. Maybe we will have mm -hmm. some new fashion next year for the board chess. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be kind of a long grind, like equal mm -hmm. material, eight pawns for each side. And each I side like has the, their own the G, file. G file. Oh, Rook but G3. now, now he's allowing 95. Is there night night? Oh, ninety five is uh. Mm -hmm. That's a that's puzzle, a one move you have to rush. consider. Puzzle you rush play rook G3. is stalking here. Yeah. If not for ninety five, rook G three would be a, a nice move. Yeah, but rook G seven probably was uh, safer in this position. Mm -hmm. It's just that the queen is a bit unlucky. Uh, not not very well placed. Yeah, very unfortunate square for the queen on d7. But here now it takes on c4, knight f6. Oh, so he's desperadoing the rook, but he's going to be down material. In the end yeah, of this. Yeah, maybe taking on c4 was uh, better. It's the thing when you play like a very, very strong grandmaster, all it takes is like one tactical oversight to just get a losing position. Mm -hmm. But up until Rook G3, like Nicola was doing very well. But maybe he just did not realize that he can take on C4. Sometimes such moves mm -hmm. can be like an oversight, like a blind spot. Yeah, Rook takes C4 would have definitely offered some better chances. Of course, then by taking on F6, Sergei would have protected E4, and you still need to be careful with your Rook. To mm -hmm. not to get it trapped. If we look at the current position, like this move C5 is actually, it's like, it's a nice way of making progress for whites. Because mm -hmm. usually when you're up the exchange, the way you end up making progress is by opening files for mm -hmm. the rooks. And of course, after BC5, uh, he can take on C5. So it's not even, mm -hmm. not even a sacrifice of a pawn, although he could have sacrificed as well to activate uh, his rooks. And now, of course, d6 is a very weak pawn. And d6 is very weak. I mean, there's knight c4, but after rook d4, uh, it's not going to last for uh, for black. Yeah. And rook c8, he simply will move the king away. And b3 is coming. Yeah, king yeah. b1 is it's a type of move you usually see in a middle game to, to protect the king, but... Mm -hmm. It's still relevant here, and now b3 should be pretty yeah. much lights out for black. Yeah, these rooks are monsters. We're going to have to remind maybe both players to mute their mics, maybe between games.
Anyway, um, do are, are the players rejoining the call for a quick analysis? Yeah. Yes, okay. just a very brief. Uh, well, that's what happens when you play a first game against a super GM. You end up um, missing simple tactics, but that's fine. And I have to say one yeah, thing. Yes, that's why. Yeah. That's why I played Rook D1 to, uh, to, yeah. to be ready against Rook yeah, D3. No, it's fine. Uh, oh, thank you, Laura. Just a huge shout out to Laura Onuk, who is now putting spam this thunder to make Sergey blunder. Laura Onuk is the WGM mm -hmm. from Slovenia that I played actually the same similar match against uh, uh, yesterday. So, all right. Um, I don't know if Eric, what, what Eric. We just had one kind of general question for you, Nicola. Um, yes. How how much specific preparation did you do for for Sergey? Did you scout out his, his openings or? I did, but I didn't did I did didn't have this on my list. I checked all his chess based stuff, mm. and this wasn't part of the prep, which is unfortunately rather obvious. So, but and you what did about play you, Sergey? This opening mm. quite well. No, it was fine. I I just uh, I assumed that I can take advantage of the G uh, G file, but then um, it turned out, and I assumed that there will be a C five coming. I just didn't expect the knight sacrifice. So. Well, I uh, I think that, that that also you should have taken on C three when you when you had a chance to force me to take with a pawn and. Uh, yes. It, it yeah, wasn't yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah. And... Uh, that would be in before you play queen d3, right? And that yeah. would have. I was uh, very thank you, Sergey. No, I was I was worried that then I was planning on castling long, and that would have tripled the pawns. I was worried that that would be opening the b file. But live and learn. That's that's why these matches are being played, and this is why you know it's uh, uh, you know playing like this is there. And thank you, Sergey, again for for doing this. This was a very educational loss. Um, as uh, most of the people who follow my channel know, I have uh, I have a stream every Monday night, uh, Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, that's called My Best Losses. So I'll, I'll actually show this game. This was very instructive. Okay, uh, we are ready to go. I'm gonna mute myself. And, and, and one request, uh, Sergey, if you can mute your microphone too, that'd be good. Uh, ah, there if is I can... a nice child there. Uh, you can, uh, yeah. uh, Sergey, you can do in Zoom actually pretty easily. Um, uh, where... Yes, uh, I, right. I will do it now. Yep. Oh, okay, so I, I do that and see you after the next game. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Good luck. Borovnice, Nola, Tripet. That's very kind of you. Thank you guys. And, and a huge, uh, if you, 2511, if you give, give a quick shout out to Chiquitas, I would greatly appreciate it because we have Laura, Laura here. Okay. All right. Time for the next game. I am muting myself and... Okay, so that was game one. I mean, if, if Nic Nicola can like avoid tactical blunders, um, hopefully he can put up some, uh, some bigger fights. In this game, yeah. he has white. Yeah, so let's see if if Sergei will walk into a prep. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see a mainline Nidorf? Mm. Nidorf is one of those openings that just scares me <laughs> like completely. Like I've, just there's so much theory, but to be a world-class grandmaster, you have to you really have to know what you're doing. Yeah, but I mean, against Sergei, I probably will be terrified in any opening. That's true. Yeah. No, but but kudos to Nicola for uh, for going into maybe some sharp theory. He's playing Adam actually Sadek. a trendy line. This H H three G four idea. Yeah. Yeah. He he likes to play Adam's attack. And, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. Yeah. This is out of my wheelhouse of like offbeat openings or tricky gambits. But... I mean, generally, the idea for white is to like develop, um, like get some nice peace harmony, like bishop e3, and then later pawns form on the king side. Like F4, but do they do G5. they do the the short castle? I think white normally either delays uh, the castling uh, or castles long side and plays g5 mm -hmm. pretty pretty soon. 
Well, in this position, it looks like White's losing a pawn. As after this last move, B4, White has yeah. to move away the knight. Yeah, maybe instead of the wow, castle. Wow, look at this move. Knight e5. Okay. So now if he takes, he's getting into some trouble. Bishop e7. This is very cold-blooded by Nicola. G5. And where does the knight go? That's the problem. If the, if the pawn takes on d5... Mm -hmm. The knight will have to retreat to d7, right? Well, there's, the there's g5, knight e4. From... Mm, not immediately. I mean, right, we first take, and now, of course, black has uh, to develop the bishop. Coming. And now g5. And I think mm. black needs to give up the piece back. This must be a prep. I mean, Nicola's still playing slower than, than Sergei. Um, yeah, that's that's of course one of the issues. But you you have to play very actively here. If if you play like just a a slow move and black castle, you have castle, to play G okay. G five as well. You have to do it now. Right. So G five, there's knight takes D five. But then maybe knight F five. Like things get very messy very quickly. Mm -hmm. Knight F five, of I course, is one of the main to ideas. Castle after G five. Knight C six. Wow. I, I guess that's no another idea. idea. <laughs> yeah. And One so, question. Do you have the engine evaluation turned on? Yes, but I in this position, I will not mm -hmm. trust it. Okay. Because I have the bar, but I don't have any lines. G5 now, and the knight has nowhere to go, and probably the only move is castle. There's also knight G8, but that's kind of a depressing... Wow, he goes for it. But uh, what do you do after queen D4? Queen D4. The, the rook is hanging, the, the pawn is hanging. Is, is is Nicola gonna win? It, it's I mean, not I mean this is the only move. move this is the only move that, that that is right there in front of you. Queen D4. Does he see it, but he's just double checking? I hope so. He still has three minutes, so it's quite a lot yeah. of time for such a position. I mean you you need to have the board vision, like just spot the two things that are undefended and find the one move to attack both of them. And that just wins a rook, right? Yeah. One of the rooks, yeah. Oh my god. Oh, no! he doesn't find it. Oh. Uh, it's tough. It's it's tough when you're playing a super GM because you don't expect them he to. He just didn't expect. Yeah, he, he so trusted much. him. He yeah. trusted too much. So now, or Sergei, of course, saw this and he will move mm -hmm. with the rook or the king. But it's, but it's still not easy still, for Black yeah, to play. Yeah, he can also play bishop e3 now and then. I mean, I do like king f8 because it, it got out of the pin and it defends g7. But bishop e3, what does black do? Mm, rook c7. Rook c7, there's bishop b6. It looks like bishop e3 just traps a rook, actually. Yeah. yeah. And if rook a, there's c7. So it's a, at least an exchange. Of course, taking on g7 would have been so nice. Such a position against the GM. Yeah, no, if, if he found that move, it, it probably would have been just easily winning. Um. But something he, to... he really needs to maintain his time as well. Oh, definitely, yeah. Because an exchange up is quite nice, and of course the king is uh, without the castle, and the rook is still on h8, but Sergei will be blitzing the moves. And that's the thing, like, even if you have, like, a good position, you still need enough time to be able to convert. So oh, now he plays queen d4. Unfortunately, I moved but now too late. It's not, not the same. Mm -hmm. Still needs uh, a lot of uh, work from Sergei because his knights are He's very still, underdeveloped. Yeah, they're, they're still in the in their starting positions and the rook on h8. But of course, it's not the time to take the pawns, especially that he's allowing d5 at least. Yeah, even knight c6 and, and the, the c pawn very quickly turned from a strength to a weakness. He a4 and he can take on a6 and it will be very hard to stop the pawns on the queen side. He simply that's has, probably what you have to play he, for. He yeah. basically has a rook and a knight down. Uh, and this pawn race probably will be faster than Sergei's development. But he is... Yeah, it's still double-edged. Yeah, I mean... He, he it takes it takes some time for Black to 
um, to develop. 95 is a nice move, just very solid center square, unleashing the rook to mm -hmm. probably threatening rook c2. I have a feeling time is going to tell the story here. Yeah. Maybe bishop f4 attacking the, the knight. Well, of course, pawns here don't really matter that much. Once black. I, I do like bishop f4 because you, you're just trying to, to use the pieces that you have yeah, that are developed. Yeah, and also it's kind of a skewer here. The bishop and the rook. Especially after the rook, rook ad1 coming. Mm -hmm. The skewer pins. 97. Maybe Man, this uh, <laughs> this game, I, I see the engine bar just fluctuating so yeah. much. It's uh, because been computer a does not understand much here. It's with so sharp position. You can probably snag the pawn, but maybe not. Yeah. The queen b4, okay, going after d6. Mm -hmm. d6 is a more important pawn. And we should note that g5 has been loose for many moves, but black can't really take it without um, worrying about d6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, d6 is more important here. That's why maybe 95 again is a forced move. But 95, there's going to be rook a d1. And white's building a pressure with all the pieces. You can also try to trade the queens by queen b8. Rook d1, natural move. H6, maybe. Is there a rook takes e7 here? Just, um, I mean, or it's a tactical idea. He also has a check on b8, right? Oh, he plays wow. it. So now it's a rook. It's a full rook. But after... Well, it's down a rook, but it's no, almost but a wooden shield. <laughs> I, think, I think rook d6 was stronger. Oh, yeah, rook d6 would attack the queen. Mm -hmm. The problem here in some cases, uh, white's pinned on, along the d-file. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is actually a pin. He is not threatening anything except for taking on e7, but then queen recaptures. So yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't even know what the threat is. Maybe some like rook d2 move just got out of the pin. But still, like, very complex. Yeah. Like, black has some problems to solve. I think king h2. Did he have g6 instead of king h2? g6 would have been insane. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just threatens queen f4 and mate. Wow. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's giving, giving away his rook. He, he was giving away a rook. And this is he's going to win e7. But, yeah, he'll but be the down king to is exchanges. safe on g8. And amazingly, the rook on h8 got into the game without needing yeah. to move. That's why maybe g6 opened. also was better to yeah, yeah keep this. the file closed. But he's already very long time. Oh my god, what a game. This is much different than the first game. Like, first game was solid, then one tactical issue. But this game, like, just no, a complete rookie mess. One. Rookie one, and it's probably over. Yeah, Sergey can take his sweet time. He's probably very relieved. It's a wake-up call, yeah. No, it's something like so. There's even six. oh, so there is one trick. If rook h3 looks like a free pawn, there's queen c8. Oh. But no way, <laughs> no way, Sergey is going to fall into that. <laughs> Yeah, if we remove the rook from, from h8, it's, uh, then it would be nice. What a game. Yeah. Definitely have some questions for the players. <laughs> uh, I think I was lost a few times. Uh, <laughs> this is your game from 2008, <laughs> Sergey, right? This whole knight d5. You played this in 2008. Ah, you, you, you mean against Luke, Luke Van Vele, right? Yes, Luke Van Vele. This, this is how the whole Adam's attack thing started with knight d5, right? That's the game. You know so good my games. I, um, I actually forgot my, my game. I was just, <laughs> <Okay>. just playing. <laughs> 
I knew that this after 95 that white is uh, supposed to be better, but going there yeah. to winning is obviously he, he, difficult. He, yeah. he, he, yes, but uh, I, I think the, the key moment was on move 15 uh, that you didn't play queen d4, which was winning. Uh, yes, and this is one of those unfortunate moments when you see uh, right after you make a move. Queen d4 here was winning, yes. Yeah. yeah yes, and, and also I think that on move 22, I mean, I, I was very much wrong with uh, 95, with this 97, this mm -hmm. was losing on, on time. Uh, and then on move 22, you could have played bishop, bishop d6 or rook takes d6. Mm -hmm. uh, rook d6. Yeah. yeah. What, what's yeah. the point? Yes. Uh, and then if black takes, 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 then queen, queen b8. What, what and has. queen oh. cannot return, yeah. Ah, uh, OK. Yes. Yeah, I see that. Probably bishop d6 is. Uh... Bishop d6, well, yeah, should winning. Yeah. yeah. All right, well. <laughs> that was a fun game to watch. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely Yeah, well, something. I was trying to play, uh, to play creatively, but uh, I mm -hmm. should have played more solid, much more solid. <laughs> okay, no, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this is basically 2008. Uh, just uh, Adam's attack started to become which is h3 sicilian against knight or started being popular against sergey's game against look van willy in 2008 and of course you know i knew this game but it's very hard to <laughs> remember the game with five plus two and adrenaline rushing in the whole nine yards so hey anamaya thank you for, thank you for the raid that's very greatly appreciated thank you I'm sorry, Eric. We I, I interrupted you. you. You wanted to ask ask us questions. Oh no, you you didn't interrupt. Um, I, I I was just impressed that you you knew this line better than uh, than Sergey. <laughs> better than <laughs> Sergey, yeah. I wouldn't say that, but that's fine. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, this is definitely going on my best losses. How Nicola almost won a game against the Super Grandmaster. All right. This honestly, this is already this match is already worth it. I'm gonna brag about it for the rest of my life. Thank you, Sergey. Let's uh, let's play. Let's play next game. Let's play. Thank you. Um, how to how to remove it? Oh, um, if you don't I see guess. the rematch button. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Oh, you see it. Okay. Okay. He muted. All right. Yeah, that was okay. very, very nerve wracking. This is crazy. So we should note that even if Nicola manages to draw or win a game, they'll still play the full 10 games, correct? Yeah, the, okay. do not root for Sergey just for the sake of all the mm -hmm. 10 games. We are not going to be taken, taken off of our uh, entertainment anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so different opening, mainline Spanish. Nice to see like every game, uh, they're, they're mixing things up so far. A4, yeah. A4 is considered like one of these anti martial variations. Now it's more difficult for Black to get a, a true martial gambit. Okay. I wonder if uh, if this mm. is also some kind of a prep. I mean, Nicola playing quickly. And, and D5 looks to be maybe some version of a martial. Like it's a pawn sacrifice because after Knight takes D5, E5 is hanging. Yeah. Uh, White also sometimes plays c3, not d3. I wonder if there is any difference here because I saw Marshall, mm -hmm. Marshall in this uh, c, c3. So oh yeah, with White the pawn in d3, played. maybe it's a bit different. Yeah, because the pawn is still hanging. But what do I do? You do now. But knight d2, okay, very solid move. Maybe you can bring the knight back and open the diagonal for the bishop. Or maybe queen d7 with the idea to bring the rook. I'm just sometimes. curious, like, um, 
if, if you don't defend the pawn, like if you play a move like queen d7, wow, knight d4. Knight d4 is a cool idea, actually. No going back. So he's doubling down on, on giving away the pawn. But this move, it, uh, it does a few things. It pressures the bishop on b3. It does help unleash this bishop on b7. Also, potentially, he can play c5. And get the C5 even more ideas, space. yeah. And one of the one of the main forms of compensation for black in this line is a light squared bishop directed at the king side, because white's own light squared bishop it doesn't really serve great defense of the squares on the king side. It's a bit out of play on b3. And Sergey, and Sergey looks to be maybe out prepared yet again. <laughs> Uh oh. The times were flashing for me. I think there was a bit of server lag. Uh, it should be okay now. I think it was fine here, but maybe. Yeah, it was only very brief. Yeah, so for those of you guys who don't know, and uh, uh, yeah, for me also now happened. Um, so Nicholas Toysen is also streaming. You can find him using the comment Nicola in my channel. Mm, we have the same command. I have a Nicola, <laughs> Nicola command too. Yeah, so please uh, open mm. his stream as well. You can open it in the second tab or use um, Twitch, um, what was it called? Multi-Twitch? Um, Multi-Twitch. Mm -hmm. Yes, multi-twitch, you can use it for all of And he, he deserves a follow, especially for that last game. And for this game, like, look at his knights. Wow, these so knights, monstrous. oh my god. I wonder if it's already preferable for black. This bishop on c... This bishop on c1, look at that, like, it's... I mean, yeah, white's bishops aren't so useful here, and black has some, like, really nice peace harmony. G2 is a very clear target. Um... I do have the engine bar. Engine is liking black, but it seems, it just seems very complex. Like you're down a pawn and you're going to have to play accurately to get yeah. compensation. And of course, once you are a bit too slow, the knights will unleash on e4, attacking the, the knight on f4. Then the bishop will come to, back to life. And then uh, all of the pieces of white can potentially direct towards the king of Nicola. Uh, and this is very double-edged. And oh, it reminds me of the previous game. Like you're down material, yeah. and you're gonna have to play actively and accurately to to get some edge. Yeah. Okay, so he goes ahead, takes the bishop. That move maybe helps White a bit more because it. Um... It does, but on the other hand, the bishop pair is a bishop pair. It's true. And maybe he can put the bishop on f6 after uh, retreating to maybe knight e6. I don't like knight g6 as much because it's kind of out of the play. Mm -hmm. So maybe knight e6, bishop f6, uh, some pressure on b2. Right. And but white, white has initiative. Like after knight takes b3, white's the one making a threat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... That's why I did not... I, I, you, you really want to attack with every move, have create a threat and have a, everything with the temple. And now he allows to trade a bad bishop for a good knight. So maybe this is also a breath of fresh air, breath of, of fresh air for... Yeah, we might see a, a two bishops versus two knights situation, which, um, I mean, usually you, you like having two bishops against two knights, but if you're down a pawn... Yeah, and it's a central and... pawn. It might not be so fun for black. But Sergei does take his time to think. Meanwhile, thank you so much, Chess Ninja, for your 10,000 beats. If mm. you are, uh, if you, if you place this as a bet on Nicola, we have quite a good odds here. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this move, knight a5. Like just leaving, leaving the knight on f4, going after the bishop. Yeah, Sergei is counter-attacking. Uh, yeah, taking on f3 maybe is giving up your... Of course, bishop pair is gone. Also, now all it of It seems this, like the compensation has disappeared. Yeah, and the pawn structure immediately reveals all of the weaknesses, especially with knight c6 immediately 
coming mm -hmm. and you don't really know where to put the queen now oh queen h4 and the, the problem now is white's pieces are are very well positioned and without the light square bishop like you you would love a light square bishop for uh mm -hmm. for black in this position but now he was also losing another pawn he cannot recapture because oh, rook a8 and, uh -oh. and knight, knight d7 and he's walking into it it's another puzzle rush combination yeah that's why the queen on d7 probably was better although very passive but at least defending this e7 square i think now he's realizing his doom yeah but still he he managed to make sergey really try to find the best uh, continuation after this bishop on c1 being mm -hmm. completely oh bad. it is impressive like his opening preparation he's getting interesting dynamic positions um i'd be very curious okay he just resigns be very curious to see what he could have done better there yeah black was fine uh, but no, no need to take on b3 i think yeah i i've i forgot the line here that's yeah he, you have many options actually after knight e5 to f3. A lot yeah. of moves for you. Yeah, I just, uh, I did, I could, it's kind of nerve wracking here and I completely overlooked this simple tact, the relatively simple tactic. I think knight b3 needed to play it earlier. Uh, oh, I, I actually think that knight f4 is fine. Oh, yeah. Or you could, you could take on b3 also earlier. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. I remembered the game that you played against the Magnus, in which you played ninety. That Magnus played ninety six at some point, and then it was basically a Nikoland game. But that obviously wasn't in this line. So, oh, it it was no, the line with with H three. It was an H three line, and I was hoping to use that. I. I know that knight, uh, with knight d4, my book knowledge basically stopped, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. I'm and and Sergey, what, what point were you out of your kind of opening preparation? Uh, well, I, I knew that there is move d5 after d3 and takes, takes knight bd2. I think it was some games, maybe Caruana Carlson or something, but Magnus played f6. As far as I remember, maybe I, I am wrong, but I think he played mm -hmm. f6 and yeah. And what what would you recommend instead of knight takes b3? Because we were liking Black's activity, but wasn't sure how uh, how to best continue. I'm not sure also, but but uh, 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 at least I think that uh, even after knight b3, knight b3, it was better to play some knight e6 move. And to keep the bishop on b7, and the and the knight, and the, or I and think then the probably c5 and good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and also c5. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, c5 instead of knight takes b3 was also interesting. Okay. C5 here, or maybe bishop c5, also put some pressure on f2. Bishop c5. Yeah, Which because I, it's not so easy for me to make a move. Yeah, I'm not sure if I want to take on d4 because some g2 or something. Yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. The end of this position is that Black needs to play c5 and then c4 and mm -hmm. then put Bishop on c5. But uh, the right uh, yeah. continuation basically escaped me. I actually played this uh, a lot, but obviously playing this against the. Uh, Somebody, my strength in playing this against Sergey is a very different uh, position. So, okay. All right. Thank you, Sergey. Let's uh, time for the. I'm going to mute myself and time for the next game. Okay. okay. Good luck. Good luck. Wow. What a prep. Yeah, no, it's impressive. Like N Nicola, I didn't realize he, he's so like knowledgeable about like these, uh, I guess these theoretical games. Um, 
definitely way more knowledgeable than me uh, <laughs> regarding recent opening theory. Oh, and now they are in Karakon. I wonder if we will mm. see a tal, tal variation. What is a tal yes. variation? It's is with this... H4 and mm. H4 and H... Mm, I think it's also G4. He sacrifices on B2 if queen plays to B6. G4. G4 mm. now. I demand. I demand G4. It's well, another so line I don't know too much about, <laughs> but I, I know there's a lot of theory. I did I see this trendy. one already in some adoption matches. Uh, mm -hmm. Nicola, Nicola did, uh, did, did beat uh, titled players with this variation. So maybe he's taking his time here? He might be choosing between G4 immediately and first maybe Bishop to E3. But I think we, he knows what he wants to play. Well, maybe he wasn't expecting Sergei to play a Karo Khan. I, I can't remember Sergei playing too many Karo Khans in like professional events. Oh, might be a small curveball. G four, okay. <sighs> I called it. Okay, so now I think yeah, Knight C three, and if um, now now what? Probably uh, he might even play F four. I'm mm. not sure, but maybe something simple more. Do more you like know that. why the bishop goes to d7 and not h7? Because it seems so counterintuitive. Um, it feels like Sergei is now a bit more cautious, knowing because he already knows mm -hmm. it's a tal variation, and yeah. So now, uh, White is is giving up on b2, and sometimes they even give Ooh. up their rook. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> well, this looks like really, really sharp. Because Nicola knows this line so well. Uh -huh. And I'm sure that Sergei is already regretting going for Karakan. Yeah, like now it doesn't even look like a Karakan. It just looks like a sad French. Okay, come on, F4, point. F4, do it. <laughs> is F4 like the main? Is this still I, main it's line? One, of, one of the lines, yeah. Ooh. Oh, what would you do on F4? Uh, maybe knight c6. I mean, usually black wants to apply pressure. I think I think you can play h5 and g5 there. I was looking at it, mm. but I, I think my head is just not big enough to remember all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should note now that if queen takes b2, white always has his rook b1 yeah. uh, resource with rook takes b7. So... Yep. Nicola very patient with queen d2. But it's it keeps all the threats. Uh, f4 still might be played. Uh, he's kind of forcing h5 because you feel nervous mm. about uh, the possibility of white to play h5. And then g5 and you don't have h5 to close up the position. And of course here the easiest is to close position for black and turn all of the play to the queen side, which mm -hmm. for black would, would be really good because of all the pieces heading that direction but now after g5 i think so g5 it's, it's a move that usually you don't want to play like a very anti-positional mm -hmm. and the, the big drawback with this move is you you give away the f5 square for yep. black's knight um so sergey is probably dreaming of uh his potential knight outpost question is what else do you do as white do you play f3 Oh, Hedgehog, Intake. thank you for gifting us up to AM Ad Adan in uh, Nicola's channel. Mm. Yeah, a lot of support for Nicola, guys. You have a lot of nice emotes in the channel. Please spam. Yeah, you use the Nicola, Nicola command. Use the Nicola use emotes. My <laughs> channel's emotes as well. Let's let's root for for Nicola. It's another game like he's getting a nice lean development and he hasn't even sacrificed anything yet. Yeah. I normally don't like to take on h5 because you uh, allow activity for the rook in, at the later stage. Uh, and I always feel nervous. Once you trade the queens, the rook on h8 becomes a beast. And your pawn on h4, of course, becomes the target immediately. Mm -hmm. 
But, but here at the same with... time, white scaling initiative. Yeah, like active there's knight. still a lot of initiative. And he can always play h5, but it's defended. g5 cannot be played. The question is, like, how do you make use of your lead in development and your space advantage as white? Because it visually, it looks really nice, but like black is super solid. Like, everything's defended. Uh, you know what I'm sensing? Another sacrifice. Knight takes d5? Yes. Mm. We already saw a knight takes knight. I guess knight to d five sacrifice. Mm -hmm. in it game was not. Two. A, it wasn't even taking anything, and he did not hesitate. The move <laughs> was played quite quickly. Now he's thinking. No, mm. he took on c five. Okay, so very five, peaceful I'm... series of trades. Well, white still has quite a nice position. Both both knights of black are not developed. So many pe already the third game out of four, Sergei is severely not, underdeveloped. Not following opening principles. <laughs> at all. Yeah, like the, the, the games, at least from Sergei's perspective, are, they're not the typical games you want to show like newer players. No, no don't, don't learn <laughs> chess. Like I will, I, will, I will turn the board. Just l look at the, this position from Black's perspective. And it's hard to imagine that... Uh, the, there is such a big rating gap between them. Mm -hmm. Well, he finally develops a knight. Move 14. But now rook g7. But e okay, e5 is hanging, so we, we could see a trade. Hanging. Yeah. You probably don't want to take on g7 because e5 pawn is more valuable. So mm. maybe knight d3. But then black cannot castle because f7 will be hanging as well. Mm. And he might even push the H pawn after long castle. Well, after knight e5, the um the knight will defend f7. And it's all it's also threatening a fork on, on f3. So now long castle. Probably... Long castling are like, yeah, because you get the king yeah. safe. You want to use the open e file. It's another crazy, crazy position. Yeah, the knight is defending f7, but we of course want to trade it by knight d3. Oh, I think I'm more nervous than Nicola. <laughs> well, looking at his time just makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. 52 seconds. Yeah, of course, it takes a lot of time to... to because you, you have so much trust in your opponent. Mm -hmm. You really need to switch off this feeling of... Uh, that, that he cannot blunder, that uh, you cannot outplay him. You can. You just need to... Uh, to, to simply play chess and make the best moves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hopefully the first, at least the uh, first few games gave him some confidence that he can still mm -hmm. throw some punches and, and create opportunities. But now Black finishes development and F2 and H for pawns and become... Not the, not the prettiest pawns. Mm -hmm. Some trades here were probably not in Nicola's favor. Yeah, it was a difficult position to play with, uh, with a little time, yeah. and things are looking solid for uh, for Black. I do like Bishop H3 because you restrict the knight. Mm -hmm. It's still a little bit awkward. Like the minor pieces for Black are not so impressive, but yeah, okay, no, Sergey just goes H4. pawn grabbing. Yeah, that's the problem with all of these gambits uh, and very aggressive lines. If you catch your opponent into uh, a, a opening trap and mate. It's really nice, but once you lost the feeling of the position and you forgot or you forgot the line or you could not uh, finish with the mating attack, you might end up just losing because the position suddenly And speaking collapses. of just losing, uh, we're going to see another simple puzzle rush tactic. Yeah. But it's so hard to play, like blunder free with, with five seconds left yeah yeah everything is collapsing here and suddenly it's white king safety is not ideal you cannot move the rook but it's another another cool game i mean from from an opening and early middle game very standpoint. exciting yeah it, it was it was very very dynamic very interesting position but uh, I think White should not have played knight d3 because after we exchanged the knights, or to take on d3 with the bishop, maybe it was. 
Vai tā? Uh, jā. Because after Queen D3, Knight H6, I thought. Uh, mm-hmm. And... Yeah, and also I wasn't sure about Rook takes G7, maybe Knight D3 and to keep this pawn on E5. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, Knight the... D3. Yeah, the position was uh, way too dynamic for my uh, ability to calculate in uh, uh, bad as it is uh, in uh, in a in a position that was this complex. Um, okay, that's that's on me. I actually was um, calling uh, you to play g4, and even after you thought for a while, I was like, still play, please. It so it's my fault. I this blame this loss on me. No, 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 G4. Yeah, well, it, 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 yeah, sorry, it, sorry. it was actually a game, uh, Kramnik, Kramnik against Leko, and they played G4, Bishop D7, and Knight D2, I think they played. It, it, was, famous, uh, it was famous game where Kramnik had to win in order to win the match in mm-hmm. Brissago 2004. Wow. All right. and I just have a very basic question about this opening because I, I don't play this this line for either side. But why why do you put the bishop on d7 and not h7? Yeah, yeah, but then the problem is that he goes e6 and some some crazy oh. position. Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Good to know. Yeah, just um, one couple of uh, program announcements. Original Black Piper, thank you for your support. It means a lot. Thank you for all the gifted subs and thank you for the cheers. That's very greatly appreciated. And thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, the funny thing is that uh, um, I played an adoption match against WGM Laura Unuk, who is actually in chat, and we we played um, this Carol advanced Carol can advanced Bishop F5 and she played four H5 and then I followed it to the Bishop G5 line and uh, I ended up managing to win that game which is that was fine I, I wasn't sure about G4 I know that's uh, one that's actually the line but I couldn't really remember the details so I was wondering whether it was the right decision to get in there but this was definitely a, a very interesting game and uh, you know I don't think I was without chances so anyway yeah, yeah. thank you let's I'm going to send the rematch okay good luck okay good luck Okay, so approaching the halfway point. Yeah. Yeah, no, these games are entertaining, but we're we're kind of seeing recurring themes of of there's being some chances, but also the um I guess a factor of time trouble and just tactical blunders. Um yeah. being the, the big kind of I guess uh causes Italian. for losing. Wow. Italian. Mm. Have we had any opening repeating so far? Probably. No, I, I think I, I feel like Sergey is going to play a different opening every game. He's just trying to to, to find an <laughs> opening where Nikola will not catch him and turn front. Right. <laughs> but it's nice. Like um, I guess most grandmasters these days, they're just so flexible and in terms of what lines they can play, and it's hard to. Uh, of course, and they it's study hard to so many exactly games. Of course. Exactly. I guess the exception to that is MVL. Like you can always expect a night orphan and Grunfeld from him. <laughs> yeah, he even says it himself that he's the most boring, uh, like uh, top player. <laughs> that he's always has the same, <laughs> the same openings. He he's so funny. <laughs> Von Cloud? No, I don't think so. Uh, Sergey has a lot of respect for Soviet school and for Nikola and. Uh, he will not play that. Yeah, we, we should keep in mind this is Sergei Karyakin and not Hikaru Nakamura. So, <laughs> yeah. No, if if a Soviet player plays on uh, King E2, he's just banished from from Soviet school, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, he cannot pronounce the name Have of Dvore- the Dvoretsky anymore, or mm-hmm. or uh, mm-hmm. even even uh, mention Nimtsovic. So that, yeah, no, this this is forbidden. Yeah, this opening is like the complete opposite of a bond cloud. The player is playing very normally. Ooh, G4. Oh, wow. Now Sergei's t- turn. Now we will see a lesson by uh, Top Grandmaster how to 
attack in Gioco Piano. Yeah, well, that, I, that's actually pianissimo, right? I don't know. I've, I actually don't know the difference between piano and pianissimo, but um, I, I do. I, I really like this move G4. And I, I don't quite like uh, Black Castling because of the idea of G5 coming. Exactly, Kuchin. Yeah, you cannot pronounce Batwinik or Dvoretsky anymore. <laughs> well, we see G5. This looks really yeah. dangerous. I mean, G5 is so hard to stop, too. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should be six now. And if he takes, of course, Sergei probably will not take because then uh, F takes E6 and F file will open. And immediately we can see the exposed weak F4 square. And the knight will immediately go to, to a four via g6. Oh, he, he plays now. A g5, yeah, it's it's a very, very powerful attack. I've mm -hmm. I've lost a few like very quick games from the black side in these sort of positions. Where now I mean I guess Sergei's ooh, Sergei brings a knight in. I was thinking bishop g5 was more natural, but there's so many white pieces that that are just having fun in this position. Um, and the rook can always come to g1. There's h4, h5 mm -hmm. ideas. Uh, so, uh, Eric, in, in positions like this, where white is attacking on your king, what what is normally your reaction? Um, I mean, there's a, a few strategies to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah, so from, from a positional standpoint, sometimes you just want to shift the focus to the center. Mm -hmm. Especially if the opponent is going for a flank attack, a move like d5, you should always mm -hmm. keep in mind, oh. which ooh, Nicola goes for. <laughs> Another strategy is just going for trades. If you trade pieces, then hopefully you won't get mated. But sometimes that's hard to achieve. I like, I like this move, queen f3, you get the queen involved, you reinforce e4. You're also controlling f4, so now knight f4 doesn't make as much sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now this knight might get in trouble after h5. We would need to find where to put it. Mm -hmm. Here, which knight do you take with? You could even take with a pawn. It, it does open this d file, yeah. but it's hard for black to exploit. Okay, this yeah, move well, makes sense maybe as queen well. d7 and rook d8, but probably bringing the second knight into play. And he also potentially can bring the other rook once he moves his king out of the first rank. He could join the attack. Via There's also like G1. weird rook a4 or rook a5 ideas, but that's correct. Probably no yeah. need so soon. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there, there's a lot of things for uh, for black to worry about here between h5 and rook g1. Yeah, yeah the knight um, probably already has to take on e4, otherwise it's so much pressure on f6. We obviously don't want to open up the g file completely. We don't want to double the pawns on f6. That probably already will be strategically lost. So Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is what happens when, when a super grandmaster follows opening principles. Like he developed his pieces and uh, and yeah, now, now just has a very fun attack. Queen takes okay, e4. So now h5 is already a threat because uh, knight is pinned to the mating square. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. And now well, he's going for a uh, counterplay oh, against f2. Sergei is immediately replying. He probably did not even calculate it. I was wondering if h5 worked there. It's an interesting line. But this also seems very pleasant. Yeah. Because h5 is still. At least still an idea. And of course, you have to calculate. But the simple idea of queens like castling. Getting maybe all we should the pieces for, maybe we should force a queen trade. The queen is so well centralized on e4. Maybe queen c6, since the rook mm. on h1 is not defended. Oh, he does it. I, I'm I'm not sure whether it's good or not that I'm calling the moves of Nicola, but at least <laughs> he's playing fast. So he's not fast. getting mated immediately. Yeah. I think there's a problem. Uh, there's just a big problem with the structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the structure definitely could have been better. All of these pawns are potential targets. 
But it's still some success position. though, like to get an end game equal material. I don't know how, how much longer it's gonna stay equal material. So Sergei takes a nice position for the knight on c5. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Nicola just ignoring uh, ignoring the a6 pawn. Mm -hmm. Though it's risky for white to take, because if white takes twice with the rook first, there's rook a8 in the end. But now f3 is already a little bit, uh, because already your knight is uh, finding a good square afterwards on f4. Mm -hmm. The problem with f3 is then king f2 and the, the pawn is permanently probably a weakness. Yeah, but he could have played the knight f4 afterwards and the king, mm -hmm. uh, if king takes, he is dropping the knight on c5 because of discover check. Yeah, there's definitely some like position ideas to get the outpost. I wonder why Sergei's not playing h5 because uh, it's better to move this knight to like e7, right? And then you don't have any activization. Yeah, the knight would be very sad on e7. Yeah. I think we're oh, going to see like play. just positional grind from white. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but unfortunately, Nikola is getting into time trouble again. Maybe rook d8 here to pin the mm -hmm. knight to c5 to defend the pawn. It's funny, knight h8 I think makes more sense in knight e7. Because mm -hmm. the knight actually has a path here to come to f7 and then probably to g4 come to d6 or, or h6 and g4. And on f7 d6, you, you prevent five, any pawn breaks. Yeah. Yep. His uh, pawn structure looks solid now, but actually once the knight on c5 is gone, the pawns become targets as well on b3 and on d3. Yeah, the problem is it's hard to remove the knight from c5 because there's always yeah. b4, even if you attack it. Mm -hmm. I'm just realizing there, there's another idea with knight h8 to play rook h6 mm -hmm. and, and then, then knight return the knight to g6 uh -huh. and just go after the pawn. That's very, very smart. Very devious. Not an easy idea to consider to put the knight in the corner and then just return mm -hmm. it to but the But now the pawn on e5 is hanging. Okay, so... d4. Huh. Interesting. It's still not so easy. It does look nice for white. Um, Nicholas holding on. Time is a problem. Maybe rook d8. That's very true. Because you don't want to allow these pawns in the center. And if I were black, I would probably just throw in a move like a5. Uh -huh. Just so to the pawn is not a sitting duck. Mm -hmm. and to but stop at this before. point, you just got to play a move and pray. Mm -hmm. Oop. Time. Yeah, that game had a, a different feel than the, the previous ones. Well, finally we saw... Was the, it? <laughs> finally we saw the Grandmaster in the attacking seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I lost the, I lost got, the, the uh, sense of time. It's this is already a lost end game, I presume. Well, it's better for me, but uh, it was still still a game. <laughs> yeah. You you were holding, uh, yeah. It's it's actually really nice uh, how you were defending here and finding all these ideas. Knight H eight, really nice idea. You Knight H eight actually... was very good, yeah. Like even rook h6 and knight back to g6 is an idea to attack yeah. one on h4. Yeah, I was, I was. Uh, I think I was winning with with a, 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 a h5 instead of bishop e3, but I didn't see this move. Yeah, Nicola could have played f3 at some point and put the knight on f4, and I was surprised that yeah. uh, Sergei did not push the knight earlier. But also, I think uh, h5, uh, yeah, h5 earlier uh, was winning the knight, right? Because of the mate on h7. You yes, played yes, it the, so the quickly. Yeah. I, sh I should have played h5, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was I was worried. That I didn't really want to play queen c6, which I felt was kind of a little bit of a cop-out. Uh, but um, uh, actually, computer considers that the top move. Uh, yeah. I, I was still impressed. So you, you survived like this middle game attack. I, I thought it was going to end very quickly. It just seemed like White had so many resources. Mm -hmm. But it was still nice to get some uh, some end game. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Um, 
it's yeah. uh, this is halfway point i think it's five and nothing right mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's five nil. um so is this uh, a good time for anybody i don't need to go to the restroom or anything is anyway that's that's fine sorry let's uh i'm still going strong good <laughs> you too all right very good i'm gonna mute myself and send the rematch and let's look at the next game okay good luck good luck yeah this uh this match is one of those uh matches where you don't really feel the time flying flying by right it's already more than mm -hmm. an hour into the match and it feels like it's just one uh really uh intense and no there there is no time to really uh sit and uh think that we might get tired or anything and it's also That's so true. fun to see <laughs> To see the Grandmaster finally getting inspired to attack by Nicola. <laughs> yeah, no, um, I, I feel like maybe it took him a few games to remember just basic. Uh, who is basic who principles. is the stronger player here? He, he remembered. Wow. Yeah, but and... no, it, it's it's a fascinating like this this sort of matchup is, is just so fascinating to see like how how a super GM deals with kind of um, I don't want to call Nicola an amateur player, but an expert rated player. Mm -hmm. like who knows his stuff but it's still um it's still hard to uh to put up a fight at least in some of these games wow uh the original black pepper thank you so much for three months subscription in advance that's so nice thank so you. i do want to apologize I, I didn't realize the game started but uh we're seeing yet another different opening yeah and at some point uh the computer showed me that it's called Deutz Gambit. I've never heard this name before. Have you? I've this heard it maybe once or before? twice where like people in Twitch chat want me to play it and then I just don't know what it is. But I, I've seen this move order. Yeah. Um, and it's, I, I will say it, it's objectively fine for black, it's but fine. it's super tricky, especially for blitz. Mm -hmm. And yeah, D4, it's kind of a surprise move. Like the- Yeah, and he took with so the bishop. Attackers. Oh, but now bishop f6. This is a typical puzzle puzzle rush uh, mm. as well. I think it just leads to a trade of, of material. It's complicated, yeah. though. Yeah, but then you take on e5 and f7 is hanging. Uh, yeah, f7 is hanging, right? Well, I mean, our queen, we have to take the bishop first. But you do open up the f file. I mean, there's yeah, there's a few different captures to to consider. So you're mm -hmm. you're saying bishop takes f six. Yeah, bishop takes f six. Bishop takes bishop f one is forced. Uh, mm -hmm. D one, yeah, is forced. Bishop takes. d eight, rook d eight, rook g one. I mean, there's even knight c two in the end. Yeah, knight c one, knight c three, knight a one. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so he's going into to something. You have but to take the queen. It's two pieces for a rook, right? Um. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, after you take on d1, you're going to take the knight eventually on a1. Mm -hmm. And you, usually I prefer the two pieces over the rook in these sort of situations. But black's going to have... Black still has all eight pawns. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fantastic position. I'm wondering why he didn't take on f4. Maybe knight b5 was, was some idea. Probably knight b5 is annoying, attacking c7 and a7. Uh, but now e takes f4 is already a good move. Huh. We should note, um, so white has knight and bishop for rook and two pawns. Yeah. But he's he's not taking the third pawn, which mm -hmm. looks free. Yeah, like G five ideas. I wonder what he was worried about. He just wants to activate the rooks as soon as you know possible. what after after e takes f four there was rook f one and if g five there's g three. Ah, so a file pressure. And if g five g three, okay. So some complications that Sergey wants to avoid. It does look pretty balanced right now. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, 
I mean, usually two minor pieces are are worth a rook and two pawns because they 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 can coordinate better together. Mm -hmm. Of course, it depends what uh, kind of position it is, what stage of the game. Mm -hmm. Of course, in an end game, two pieces become extremely powerful. But always have to keep in mind like uh, black creating pass pawns. Uh, but what about white pushing B pawn to break this pawn structure and create potentially, uh, oops, sorry, an outpost on D5? Oh, you mean like B4, B5? Yeah. I think the, the issue is black can just kind of ignore it. And, and bring the rook to an C6, open file. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely an idea. Mm -hmm. It's kind of this, uh, this end game minority attack. Yeah. And these sort of positions, when you have minor pieces, one strategy is to create like some weak squares mm -hmm. for your pieces. Like you really want to create a d5 outpost, mm -hmm. but it's not easy to achieve, and it probably takes a lot of time. Well, maybe to start with, he couldn't move the knight to e3 mm -hmm. because it doesn't really do anything on a3. While black sure. un until the pawns all all of the black pawns are still in places right mm -hmm. so which means both rooks are not working so white can just in, improve the position of the pieces position. and i feel like I, I feel like nicola should have just played a, a quick move there like he, okay he plays king f2 which also looks fine but there is no reason he took a minute and 22 seconds there as type of position you should either play knight c2 or king f2 quickly and save time <laughs> least in my opinion. Thank you so much, the original Black Pepper, for all the gifted subs. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. thanks Sorry, guys. It will be a lot of mowing now in my channel. <laughs> yeah, no, there, there's been there's been a lot of support today, um, you know, across all the channels. So oh, yeah, I'm very I, appreciative. I will move this uh, alert box over my face instead of Nicola, because <laughs> it's, it's a bit disrespectful. <laughs> I have to cover up some face. <laughs> this move f5. Yeah, so he, he is really eager to open up, but uh, what does it mean? So, so his threat was to take on e4, which I but, think he can still do. Yeah, but if f takes e4 and he cannot take now on d5 e4 now. Is coming. Yeah. Another, another tactics. And now black's gonna get a and now monster d5, center. and this this is. Uh, this is very far from equal, unfortunately. It, it's it's a very fun position to play for black because you just mm -hmm. keep like building up the center. And Eventually, then your rooks the become progress. monstrous, and white just cannot do anything here. Yeah, I mean, you you would love to like as white, you would love to have a pawn on d4, f4 mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. reinforce e5. But yeah, if you had an f4, case. it would be still probably much better. But black can simply put a6, then c5, d4, and it's almost unstoppable. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it's hard points. to like create a, a stable blockade here for white. Um, okay, we should note king d4 would, would defend the pawn, but wouldn't last so long. Yeah, you don't want to have the king there. So what Nicola is trying to do with this b4 move, he's trying to delay the advance of the pawn c5 mm -hmm. um but i i think at some point put, we're gonna see yeah, put the knight to g4 it's mm -hmm. kind of an, an a bl blocker but of course until b6 c5 or a5 mm -hmm. so like he's a5. just give, giving up the pawn and then we'll push c5 d4 and it's and it even comes with a tempo d4 check and then d3 no, it's it's such a such a difficult position to play. It does look like a wall of a minister of defense. True, <laughs> <laughs> we have comments in chat. Yeah, as correctly chess.com tweet said today, the minister of defense cannot cannot adopt by only defending. You have to win all of the ten games, uh, and this is an adoption attempt by the blitz and rapid world champion and the challenger of 2016 Sergei Koryakin against Nikola Stoisin. So Nikola only needs half a point at any game and then he wins the match. Yeah, the pawn's just too powerful there. Yeah, this unfortunately 
probably the night if the night was on e3 it would have been better um, i'm probably better after f5 yes yeah well because my pawn yeah pawns are getting very strong yeah f5 was a nice move I right. felt like maybe bringing the knight to c2 and then to e3 would have been one of the ways to improve the position and uh, yes, also prevent should have five. Moved, uh, moved the knight. And, uh, and also I think that knight c3 was more natural instead of knight a3 somehow to get the knight to the center. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of full disclosures here. I actually had this part of this a part of the opening prep, and I actually studied this whole line with Bishop G4 with uh, my friend and coach, international master Alex Stane Lopez. Uh, and here is a small problem. I couldn't remember how the line goes after Bishop G4. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually am glad that I remembered how it goes, but I remember him warning me that this end game is supposed to be equal, but it may be tough to prove it in practice. And that's basically what happened. Um, I needed to get the knight, knight in place sooner. I don't think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking here at the computer evaluations and King F3 was basically where it's all started going south according yeah. to the, the engine so yeah which actually makes sense and uh, you know then after f5 i didn't you know i saw f5 but i fought and then fe5 was just a blunder yeah so okay very good uh okay thank you thank you sergey uh let's, yeah, thank you let's play one more game Actually, there's, okay. there's four Good luck. left. Thank you. All right. All right. Now. Okay. Oh, Ooh, the first D4. Well, well, we'll I was, was going to say, we're going to no, see a new opening. No, but... it's it's not the Queen's Gambit. Are we going to see a London? <laughs> uh, yes. Was... I'm so oh. happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I was expecting the King's Indian, but it also did not happen. Everyone is like, oh, please, please. <laughs> D4 is such an exciting move. So Nicola, if I remember correctly, has beaten me in the King's Indian. Um, when I, I didn't play a London. But this mm -hmm. this is, um, they're actually going into like a, a very topical London line. Um, yeah, this is one of like the most critical variations of the London. I can hear how excited Eric is. I'm right so now. excited <laughs> right now. Yeah, because this is this is still all prep, at least for me. Um, so what do you do here with the queen? You so there, there's a few a moves. Um, the the main line is queen c3. Mm -hmm. Queen digs a2 is incredibly risky. Could result in in Black bishop b5 is really the quickly. main line right against it. So there's some bishop e5 ideas. Uh huh. Uh, queen a3. I'll admit, I I don't know too much about. Uh huh. It's probably the third most played move. But in general, the um the play for white involves this this pin, combined with pawn c4 and knight d4 and knight e5. Um. And th this is going to be a game where, um, Sergey might be down material. Like after queen takes c5, white's down a pawn. Mm -hmm. but there's gonna be a lot of compensation this is one of my favorite lines to play so as black you have to be very well prepared and it doesn't seem like nicola is in his preparation anymore he is probably is but he's trying to remember it's so difficult mm -hmm. to keep keep all these lines in mind but like we already had uh the marshall the adams attack we had different lines in Italian for both sides. They switched colors. Uh, so, and Nicola is not a professionally playing player. So it's not his job to play chess. It, it, that's and, a very good point. Yeah, to have so many different openings to try and keep track of. Of course, it helps to play all of these adoption matches every Sunday, basically. Today is only one exception where he, he has two adoption matches uh, within 
three days. Uh, so he's kind of still in shape, right? Because mm -hmm. of playing all of these games and plus working with Elizabeth Pets and with Astane. Uh, but still. But as he noted, like even if he studied like these specific lines before, um, you still have to remember them in the moment, mm -hmm. uh, which is not always easy to do. Yeah. And I've had many cases myself where like I'll, I'll go into a line that I studied like years ago and then it's hard to uh, to come up with everything on the spot. I'm a little bit surprised Sergei is just kind of slow playing with castling. Um, I thought it's, it's more typical for white to be aggressive mm -hmm. with c4 95. But, um, okay, some time to figure out what to do for black. So now black still can play either e6 or queen takes c5. I assume that any other move will be too slow. You need to castle as soon as possible. So it's either e6 or queen c5. Of course, a6 did waste one of the tempos for, for the development. So mm -hmm. now... So yeah. as, as black here, you, you kind of have to be a little bit worried of knight b3 which defends the c5 pawn and also mm -hmm. covers a5 square, leaves the queen very precarious. Oh, he goes wow, completely he different H5. way. So this move attacks a bishop, but it, it violates two opening principles. Mm -hmm. He's moving away from the center and he's moving the same piece twice yeah. without, his, without most of his pieces developed. I mean, even, even white can just ignore it potentially, and do something active, like c4, for example. Yeah, c4, it's, um, he it's interesting. He plays on c7, also taking away a5 square from the queen. And now this Actually, knight also move. can get uh, under attack by knight d5 for, d4, for example. The knight will, uh, will be hanging while That's knight would point. attack c6. So th this move really was against this type of opening. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like Nicola, he just wanted to trade material, like trade knight for bishop, but uh, created some additional problems for himself. Okay, bishop g4 makes sense. Trying to diffuse the diagonal, pin the knight. <laughs> I like smash time fools. So comment that Nicholas hat is there to cover up Nicholas large brain so that Sergei does not get intimidated. <laughs> I think intimidation already comment. already su was successful after move after game two. That was already enough of uh, he, he can take it off. <laughs> but yeah this um, this this queen's position is of course quite um, worrisome. Oh he does play C4. So now the king's safety becomes a big issue, plus uh, the c6 will be. And we should note that c4 also opens up this kind of d1, a4 diagonal for the, the white queen. Mm -hmm. So if ever queen takes c5, there's queen a4 ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now queen c5 probably center. already will be losing. He plays e6, trying to take mm -hmm. on c5 with the bishop and then castle if he manages that then black is okay but of course mm. now everything comes with uh, a tempo uh, if queen c5 he can even play queen b1 attacking b8 and oh queen b1 is a nice idea there's also a, a tactic here of queen a4 then rook b8 will win the queen mm -hmm. but i also like queen b1 because it comes with a tempo while uh freeing the knight on f3 and so his knight can nice join idea. like knight e5 or knight d4. It's so many ideas. And then the second knight even can come. To so join. as black here, do you dare take on a2? I guess not. No, no. a2 is long gone. You had this chance on move uh, six, seven, move seven. You had That's this true. chance. <laughs> Taking it now would be admitting that you did something wrong. But Sergey plays your move right away. Queen b1. That's a very nice find. Because you're threatening rook b8. You're threatening to move the knight to various places. Yeah. Oh, rook b7. Oh, rook b7. This bishop is so nice on c7. Uh, yeah, and then this bishop will be... What do you do even here? 
the queen has you, to you move already back. but if if you move the queen then rook d8 and rook it's basically it's, it's a mate it's a queen d8 mate afterwards yeah no time yeah Re resigning with 0.7 seconds left <laughs> that's that's a skill <laughs> Yeah, this is why you don't mess with the London. Yeah, I, I think I think that a a a a a six wasn't so good in the opening because it's losing of time. Uh, a six, yeah. My um, feeling, at least, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think Eric is very happy because we, we I got. I, I was so thrilled. I was waiting for oh, a London. He was so excited. <laughs> okay. Once D four happened, he was like, "Oh, it's London! It's London!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, far, you uh, did uh, not uh, repeat any any opening. Uh, it's yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah, and the... I, I think after castle, you should not have played knight h5 because knight is completely out of yeah. game I, there. Yeah, no, I am. Uh, I don't. I'm actually. I don't have a zen of this particular position and this particular line. Um, so I, I remember actually playing a game against. Uh, Elizabeth Pecht and Anna Muzichuk and uh, I got crushed in that there too. So I think it's time for me to refresh my <laughs> London thing. I didn't, I didn't expect we would be playing London today, to be quite frank with you. So maybe, maybe I can, I should watch some of Eric's videos on YouTube again. So, well, it's a type of line like you. You have to be very, very well prepared. I yeah. think for black to go into. Yeah. 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 So anyway, it gets very concrete. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that Queen A3 is actually okay, right? It's just the yeah. Probably the... not the main line. So uh, I think Queen it's... C3 is a main line these days. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then there's some idea where you leave the Queen on C3, you play E6 and Bishop E7, and you just develop quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, live and learn. There you go. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll send. I'll send the rematch. Thanks, you, Sergey. Okay. Good right. luck. Good luck. Thanks. Okay. So this is game yeah. eight. Yeah, that's so much to learn. So many beautiful openings. Yeah, it's, it's nice. They've been mixing uh, mixing things up. I think that that game was the quickest game. Uh, so far, that's how Just badly can moves. London go go for you if you don't know the yeah. principle of this. I mean, most people think it's just like a solid, boring opening, but uh, there's room for for fun. Okay, yet another. So we've seen a Sicilian, but we haven't seen this variation. Um, just a classical. White well, could play a rouser here, like Bishop G5, and Nicola going for F3. Also a solid move. Yeah, that's classical as well. So I'll admit this is an opening. Again, I don't really know too much theory, but um, I know it is topical among uh, high level players. In classical Sicilian, it, maybe it's one tier below like Nidorf and Sveshnikov in terms of just theoretical uh, standing. But, um, okay, we're gonna see a fun position, pawn d5. Oh, there is some trolling in Nicholas' channel now uh -oh. saying that London is a Ooh. solid, boring, unambitious opening system. Ah, uh, ha, ha. Oh, wow, there's <laughs> 10,000 bits. Provoking original. the commentator. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, always a challenge to manage all the trolling and, um, and chatter but yeah thanks again original black pepper for for all the bits yeah the original black pepper thank you for also gifting so uh, generous up to 2511 that was really nice of you thank you i look away for a moment queens, and are, then it's cool. queens are gone just a more peaceful i think af after that last game nicola just wants a more peaceful mm -hmm. uh solid Game just to calm down and to like have it under minutes. control. He's playing white. His position is. Uh, I I actually like uh, I like his position slightly more, but of course e five uh, is a better center for for black. But the question is, what do you do yeah, next? It seems relatively balanced. I mean, black's gonna have a little bit more space. 
and question how you complete development for white. Maybe bishop d3 you can still then get away with. Yeah, bishop d3 or bishop b5, maybe provoke a5, a6, which will be uh, a weak weakening uh, of b6 square. With both players have uh, a pair of bishops, both have a knight. So that's this is like the strongest uh, combination of the bishop pair and the light piece. So moving the pawns for no reason here can result in some really bad consequences. Yeah, I, I was going to point out that black sometimes has the idea of playing a6 and b5 mm -hmm. to then later play b4. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be a useful move at some point. But he probably wants to prepare it. Again, uh, Sergei doesn't need to hurry up here. He can just wait and see what white will play. Yeah, king c7 is a very patient move. Uh, but you are giving white time to put the rook on, on e1 and then white's completing development. Uh, I see. I see why we had this uh, some uh, server issues. It's a title Tuesday. And of oh. course, it's the first time Nicola is playing adoption match during the title Tuesday. That's why server is acting a little bit. So it's all Nicola's fault for um, for just overloading the server with this match. <laughs> this Sergei, we're, we're Sergei, who is, uh, Sergei who is overloading the server. <laughs> <laughs> Big brain. <laughs> Yeah, there, there's probably many, many people to blame. I mean, the, the number, like just uh, the number of active users on chess.com has been skyrocketing yeah. last mm -hmm. several weeks. Um, servers have to keep up. Yeah. So this is another position. Like if I were white, I would play rookie one probably within a few seconds. Yeah, uh, in positions like this, if you see a good move, don't look for a better one. I think it's better to save time for uh, for the end game for for the moment where you need to calculate where mm -hmm. there is that this time will be really precious and of course having two minutes advantage for Sergey is already quite a lot. Yeah, and if, if there's any like big takeaways from this match, of course there, there's opening preparation, there's these tactical moments. Mm -hmm. But I think a, a big thing for Nicola to improve on is, is just time management. Mm -hmm. and in recognizing the critical moments and, and spending less time in the moments that aren't so critical. Yeah, yeah. And that's right. something that not too many people like specifically work on, but... Yeah, rational time usage is one of the topics which is widely ignored in the literature uh, because, of course, end games are always a weakness. Uh, many players uh, uh, probably uh, underestimate how important end games are because they don't happen all the time. But of course, if your end game is quite weak, then you might even try subconsciously try to avoid getting into an end game, which uh, of course leads you to, to getting worse middle game, which can, can mm -hmm. also result in- It's a snowball effect. Yeah, yeah, it is. But time management is, uh, it also, of course, relates to psychological issues, which uh, can be just being not um, not confident enough or playing with a stronger opponent and always double checking everything, uh, overthinking. So here, a lot of a lot of problems can can come up. But with but all of that said, I mean, okay, Nicola still has enough time. I mean, it looks like things are gonna. And trade down a bit like he could force rooks off the board mm -hmm. yeah he can trade the rooks he can also consider maybe pushing f4 to block the to block the center well black probably doesn't want to capture an f4 because it gives uh, more play to the bishop but if you push your pawn, you block your own bishop on e6. F4 is kind of a double-edged move. It does give black the option of e4, mm -hmm. getting a defended pass pawn. But of course, you have a knight. You can always uh, move the knight to, to block it on e3. Yeah, okay, I, I like bishop d3, just mm, keeping I, I don't like g5 now. G5 makes f4 already impossible or you would have to play g3 to play f4 and then black can play f4 or 
D4, oh, sorry, E4. Oh, you mean G4 from white? Uh, no, G5, or, if, if black or plays black G5. G5. Oh. It, it's maybe idea. it's not so, and then G4, yeah, and to get more space. But even just the move G5 itself already makes you feel really uncomfortable. Now H5, H5 is gaining more space, preventing white from ever maybe even considering G4. Mm -hmm. And G4 was, it was kind of a positional idea that if black takes with F pawn, you get this very nice E4 square for a minor piece. Mm -hmm. But that's not likely going to be irrelevant. Maybe anymore. F4 now is, is even better because we also gain G5 square. F4, black will yeah, never be move. able to play G5 after knight F3. If black does not push the pawn, if black pushes the pawn, then of course d4 becomes available for the knight. Okay, so Nicola trying to stir up something on the queen side. Um, I did like the move a4 and b4 seems mm -hmm. double edged. Like you're you're trying to create. It's a weaknesses. bit risky. Also, your king becomes really weak now. I I mean I know mm -hmm. this. We don't have queens on the board, but look at the king. Yeah, and also the A-pawn. Like, you want Your, to play rook A1 yeah. here. Yeah, A-pawn e needs to be defended, but if you defend it with rook A1, it's E4. So these two bishops now start playing, and they feel the blood. And now F4 is probably too late. Yeah, no, this whole... I guess the whole queenside play is just backfired for white. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, Nicola wanted to create weaknesses in Black's territory, but just created weaknesses in his and own territory. Of course, taking on h5 makes absolutely no sense, because this pawn will simply run, and you cannot stop it. That's yeah, why he did not want to, to play f4. I also can understand these two bishops become super powerful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a solid position, just combination of, I guess, time pressure and mm -hmm. creating some weaknesses. Yeah, b before wasn't good. Yeah, before was just, uh, you know, not enough time to figure out what to do in, in this in this position. I think it was. Oh, the the position should be equal. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Playable. Maybe four immediately was. Uh... Yeah, I think. Was it okay? yeah. I think a4 was actually fine. It's just that b4 was... Uh... Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. Oh, well. Uh... Ah, thank you, Warren Crowder. Greatly appreciate it. Okay, so... All right. Um... Yeah. I played this... I played this line before, and I think, uh, you know, the position was fine, and then it's just... You know, I shouldn't have played uh, before. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I think that that in the opening, if white wants to play for advantage, uh, white should play queen e2 instead of queen d2. Uh, it was actually my game against Wesley Saw. Ah, so nine okay. move queen e2. I'll check it out. Thank you. So the nine queen e2 as opposed to. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but because it after queen so e2, d5, we get the end game. Which is drawish. Okay. Well, you know, I don't mind the draw against you for obvious reasons, but okay. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. All right. Very good. Let's send a rematch. Thank you. Yeah, yeah we don't mind the draw. Uh between Nicola and Sergey. Well, oh. it is interesting to see when they have like drawish positions. And then to see how Sergey creates chances to win. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's just about being patient, like using yeah. the time advantage and, and waiting for yeah, the Yeah, time advantage is very important in this, of course. Okay, so another new opening, B3. Nicola going, I, I've, I've seen a lot of people do this where they, they try and just diffuse a diagonal. Uh -huh. So triple Fiancato. Maybe we will have the other one, <laughs> B6 as well. So you have to be no, careful playing be B6. Yeah. Uh, and there's some discoveries. Maybe it's playable, but... At this point, it's probably is, but still, 
uh, it's probably not necessary to to risk like that. Uh, but yeah, about how uh, Sergey is uh, using the time advantage and some creating. You only need two weaknesses in order to win, right? Uh, mm -hmm. As we all know from. In some cases, you only need one weakness. In some <laughs> in some cases, but two is definitely enough. So mm -hmm. you can probably call it like a balance wheel where uh, he just tries to shake the position from both sides until something cracks and he starts putting pressure on that one weakness and then another. And that's what it, he did by moving the rook like rook. Uh, from H8 to A8. No, it's very ball. instructive because when you think about like a, a strong grandmaster playing a weaker player, you think that they're just going to like overpower them, like attack and then find tactics. But there's also the notion of just playing like patient strategic chess and, um, and yeah, just being, being a bit more slow and methodical and, and waiting for the opportunities. There's a lot of spam in Nicholas' channel. Oh, no. <laughs> Even I joined. Oh, ha ha ha. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, so, I guess w w when one person spams, it's not okay. But then when everyone spams, it's completely fine, right? <laughs> also, if commentator st start spamming, this is definitely okay. Yeah, then, um, yeah, I guess we <laughs> set the example for people. <laughs> Biased commentator. I mean, it's hard to not to be. Uh, we all support Nicola, of course. He, he does such a great preparation. He works so much on his chess. He improved so much. And yeah, this is like a culmina culmination of uh, the, the... Getting his... adopted by Sergey. <laughs> of course, but, this experience yeah. is either way priceless. No, it, yeah, no, it's incredible. Like, um, I mean, just uh, not only like a life experience, but, uh, but also just invaluable learning experience. Mm -hmm. like not every day you get to play a world. I think Sergey's in like the world top twenty still, because um, you you learn so much from from these games. Yeah. And I just feel like a this simple play, and he just crushes you. Whatever mm -hmm. whatever you do, whatever he does, he crushes you. He blunders, he still crushes you. It's it's just insane. So I was going to say, I feel like this game is a, the least theoretical opening of everything we've seen so far. Like every game we, we've, it feels like we've heard the players quote some like famous game mm -hmm. in recent times, but now it's just kind of just, okay, natural development from both sides. And B5 is a kind of fancy move. Yeah, I like B5. It does put uh, the, this, this pawns, uh, B5 and C5, they, they're kind of called hanging pawns. And uh, they they can become a weakness, but can also become a strength of the black's position. Sure. And then just to clarify hanging pawns, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily completely undefended and attacked. It just means that they're next to each other and there's no pawns on mm -hmm. the adjacent files. So no pawns on the yeah. D or It's A like files. an isolated pair of pawns. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's a strength because they control space, but it can also be a weakness. If you ever advance one of the pawns, you leave the other one mm -hmm. backwards. So, but for now, it, look, it seems like they're well reinforced. I like this move queen b6. You defend mm -hmm. the knight. And also want to bring the rook to d8 after developing the bishop. Bishop maybe goes to f5 naturally. I'm not sure. Like between f5, some... there's g4, b6. there's b7. b7 is also uh, a good position. Oh. There's e6. <laughs> e6. We did not expect that, but maybe that would have he's been my preparing fourth choice. c4. A c4 is actually a logical idea. Like just try and create a pass pawn and then maybe bring the rook to c8. And of course, here white cannot be too careless because if white thinks, okay, I'll take, they'll take, attack the bishop, I play rook b1, but then, uh uh, bishop f5. And here you will lose some material. Can you repeat that one more time? What uh, if black what plays c4, for example, and white okay. decides to take, thinking, okay, now mm -hmm. black will attack the Say bishop. That again. <laughs> That's Alexa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking, say, saying that if black pushes. 15 drama. Start on the 
already have. Uh, and oh. Amber Marie Bollinger. <laughs> Alexa, quiet. Quiet. <laughs> I didn't think I said her name, but she's always listening. Sorry for that. <laughs> <laughs> she's always listening. Big Brother yeah, is watching you. <laughs> It's a problem sometimes. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a, a few things just happened there. Um, mm -hmm. the, the knights have come to G5 and G4, and now Black has lost this bishop and getting some ugly structure. Yeah. The problem is that the bishop on E6 had a nice idea in mind, but it was too slow. Uh, he had no mm -hmm. time to push C4, which would come with uh, an attack on b3 because bishop would be attacking b3 through the pawn as well, but he simply did not have this, uh, did not have the tempo for. Yeah, c4. sometimes when you put your bishop on e6, you also want a pawn on h6 to just prevent knight g5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But here, I, I really like this move from Sergey knight e4. This does so many things. It defends f2. It attacks e5 by unleashing the queen. Also offers a trade of bishops. And the knight is like can't really be removed from e4. Mm -hmm. the black's pawns are feeling of course, down if on the e file. White, if white wants to take on c5, they would have to trade the bishop first. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. And if he takes on c5, he has to be careful with knight f2. Knight f2. Or rook f2 maybe is better. And then you can bring the other rook. Mm. He's still going for it. Uh, but also knight d7 comes. You know what he's threatening? Uh, queen c3. Ah. Also knight d7. Yeah, so there's there's all these forks all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like so many of black's pieces are targets. You have really no time to take on f2. Yeah, this is probably he overlooked this idea of queen c3. Yeah, I don't even know how you defend both. I guess, okay, take on f2 and hope for the best. Oh, now Sergei can decide between queen c3 or knight d7. Oh, triple fork maybe incoming. Oh, painful. Combined with the pin, there's a term I like to use when you pin and you fork, it's called a pork. <laughs> it's a very powerful tactic, very delicious tactic. <laughs> Unless you're of certain religion. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, or just vegetarian or <laughs> vegan. Which can also be called a religion. Yeah, <laughs> but he goes for rook d7, so not even porking but rather just going for the e7 pawn that's a that's a monster threat because then you're going to win f6 yeah. <clears throat> and now he can take on d5 because when you're up material also trading pieces is uh is always helpful useful but also he's mm -hmm. taking on e7 afterwards and the position collapses after rook e7, he also comes rook f1 with another fork, not the pork this time, just the fork. Mm -hmm. oh, just, that's just the pin, sorry. <laughs> because the, the, the rook on f6 is uh, not defended enough. Well, now it is defended by the queen. But okay, knight d7 is still coming. Oh, knight d7, painful. Every single black piece is attacked here. He would love to teleport his queen to h5. Mm -hmm. And mate, yeah, if the, if the queen could be on h5, that would be nice. <clears throat> Instructive game, though. I like the play from uh, from Sergei. Waiting yeah, for the well, opportunity. Got bishop, bishop g4 instead of, instead of knight g4, and black was fine. On the move I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just not, not to give up this uh bishop yeah i was hoping to have a counterplay already off on the f file didn't materialize so okay yeah but, yeah but it's very very ri 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 risky positionally mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it op no, opens up too much no um 
Okay, well, here you go, guys. Um, you know, you, if you don't lose tactically, you're going to use positionally. What can you do? Anyway, it's fine. That's expected. All right, last game. One more try. I did defeat two adoption, adoptions in the very last game, so I'm very hopeful. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm to gonna, go all out. Yeah, going so, all out. Thank you. Yeah, we can expect even more spamming in the chat now. Hmm. <laughs> Don't overdo it, guys. Don't do it for the spamming. Do it for supporting. So what opening are we going to see? The original Black Pepper. Thank you for 5,000 beats mm. to Nicola. Thank you for this support. Oh, thanks, Black Pepper. Yeah, I always have to monitor Nicola's chat, too. Wow. I just That's, have it, it goes <laughs> insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. I Same. abandoned my moderation duties for today. <laughs> Hope there's at least one one person who's still there who's a mod. Yeah, but they, they already resigned as well. Mm. I saw Hedgehog uh, just conceding to do this. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just can't stop it. No, you cannot okay, stop so this. <laughs> yet another Sicilian variation. This time Sicilian Khan. I'm slightly disappointed we're not seeing like any really, really crazy dubious gambits, but maybe that's expected between these two players. Yeah, it's hard to expect it from Sergei because he already found himself in a couple of quite uncertain positions, to put it mildly, especially the mm -hmm. second one. So going into uh, a gambit line which he's not familiar with well, would be even more risky for him. I feel like this opening is just the opposite of a gambit, like super solid for both sides. I think Sergey is probably going to employ a hedgehog, which yeah. I know is a... So d6 also will, will be played. And then g6 and h6, right? That's... Uh... Um, you don't always have to include these kingside pawn moves, but the hedgehog is usually defined by having at least the a, b, d, and e pawns on the mm -hmm. 6th rank. Mm-hmm. And it's nice, like you control the squares on the fifth rank. There's a good number of people who like who consistently ask me in the Twitch chat to play a hedgehog. <laughs> it's a nice uh, sort of adorable animal. Or maybe I I actually transposed it to a hippo. Hippo is uh, oh the hippo is yeah that's, easy to get the animals what... confused. Uh, yeah, especially in my channel, I guess. <laughs> Spam so this flower to hmm. give Nicola power. I love that. Ooh. Anna Maya sets a trend. Trend. <laughs> Let's do it. I've never had such a spam in my own channel. Okay, I'm, I'm joining in. I feel like the, the strategy is just, just copy and paste. Yes, it is very simple. That's why it's called five head strategy. <laughs> okay, I, I joined in once. I don't. I usually don't partake in. Oh spam, my god! It's probably the first time ever Eric participates <laughs> in this. <laughs> so, what do you think is show. the idea of Nicola here after f four? Is he gonna continue with f five? Oh, b four. I guess the, the question He's is answered. He's doing a hedgehog in the center. But a, a large, a more active, larger hedgehog because he's he's on the yeah. Fourth that's rank. that's like really powerful hedgehog, very angry hedgehog, I would say. So angry hedgehog versus just quiet, peaceful hedgehog. Is he gonna play g4, h4, a4, and control all the fourth rank? Ah, uh, you know what it is. It's not hedgehog. It's I I I mm, porcupine. Porcupine? Oh, porcupine is, it's, I think, a related animal. It is, it is a much, um, a lot. It's a scarier. Yeah, yeah, it is a scary hedgehog type. Porcupine. Yeah, and the, the, I feel, do porcupines, do they shoot out their spikes? Like, they, if you're, if you're too close to them, they can shoot you with their spikes, I think. That might be a myth, I don't know. But you don't uh, mess with them. <laughs> I, I immediately remember the Pokemon, uh, 
there was a Pokemon with the same uh, abilities. <laughs> But uh, they probably also do the same in real life. Oh, I don't life. remember my Pokemons. <laughs> I would probably, yeah, imagine maybe there's some similar one. Anyway, um, Nicola, okay, first improving the bishop. That's logical. But G G4 um, might actually be like a, a, a plan here. G4 even. Wow. Ooh, the, the spam has crept into my chat as well. Oh my god. I think god. I'll allow it. Yeah, spam this baby to help Nicola, maybe. <laughs> the, ch the chat is becoming very creative. Yeah, it, it, it happens. <laughs> I'm waiting for my mods. Oh, there is the Screws, the first mod who joined the trend. Something gone south if if you and then, then, join this. Then there's some people who are like just joining the stream and they're seeing the chat and they're they're just asking like what's happening today. <laughs> <laughs> and what is happening? This is the last game of an adoption attempt by Sergei Karekin, who is does not need to be introduced, but we can do it again. He is uh, the world blitz champion, the world rapid champion, the vice world champion. Uh, in classical chess of 2016, played Magnus Carlsen and was leading in the match until the game 11. He was very close to being world champion. Yeah, yeah. He was also better in that game, but then collapsed under pressure and Magnus won But will, match, will but... he collapse under pressure in this match? It's game 10. He needs to win to win the match. Yes, he needs All Nicola to needs to do is draw. Game. But there is a 1,000 rating point differential between them, at least in, according to chess.com. Yes, according to chess.com, it's uh, 1,000. If uh, if we take FIDE, well, uh, Nicola does not have FIDE rating. But if we convert his chess.com rating into FIDE, then it becomes 800, roughly. So what are gives... the odds? The of, odds, like, uh, mathematically, mathematically before the match, the odds were almost 4% chance for Nicola to avoid that option. Wait, that's not bad. That's like four, that's four in a hundred. That's yes. one in 25. Yes, so it's worth hmm. one in 400 to draw and one in 800 to win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but after nine games, of course, this lowered. But not by much. It actually does not really have much of the change after each game because the chance is so small. But we only need one draw. That's correct. And he has so, a very like stable, like solid position. Like in, in some sense, his, his pawns are kind of targets, but they also mm -hmm. control space or they they are well defended. Mm -hmm. And this is a uh, bit peculiar what <clears throat> Sergey just did. And yeah, you 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 saw that he played h5, which means Sergei was afraid of g4 happening. And now that h5 will become a potentially a weakness, which white can play against. Already Nicola can play queen e2, and he really needs to hurry up. Yeah, it's not too often you see h5 followed by castling. Mm -hmm. Pretty um, cold-blooded. But now Nicola is maybe a bit perplexed and taking taking a little bit too much time yeah queen e2 probably the easiest way to continue he can also play knight a4 attack b6 goes for knight e2 knight e2 unleashes uh, the d file also the diagonal for mm -hmm. the bishop mm -hmm. but he's gonna so have he's to attacking live on b6. yeah he will have to play very fast now Doesn't yeah, it's another position, much. like, mm. probably had to play some quicker moves. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes you just play quick moves, like king h1, h3. Knight g4 is a bit annoying. Takes. Uh, come on. Play. And this, this clock is giving me this anxiety. This is so, so nervous. Oh, <laughs> wish he could just get two minutes more. You need to like find a chess.com. If you're a chess.com admin, you can like manually add time. If they're friends, Sergey can add time from to him, but I don't think they added oh. each other. 
We need to? Ooh. Oh no. That was such a promising game. Yeah, no, it was a cool, cool opening position. But time, I guess time was the culprit. Yeah, you just freeze. I know that feeling. Congratulations, Sergey. Yeah, Successful congratulations. Adoption. You, uh, for the record, uh, this is my 22nd adoption match and I have lost only three against you, against the Grandmaster Amber Hamilton, uh, and against the Grandmaster Anna Muzichuk. Sergey, I think you're, mu you're, you're still muted. Oh. All right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, thank you. I was, uh, I was saying the uh, thank you, and it was, it was very impressive that uh, you. you played so well. And... No, well, I actually, uh, true be told, uh, uh, I had an online uh, on stream class with Danya about how to play this Marozzi bind positions. Uh, the problem is that I was completely out of the prep out uh, about, you know, move uh, after I play queen d3 or ninth move. The only thing I really didn't know what to play against b6 and bishop b7. And the only thing I remembered was what Danya told me was that in this position, you're supposed to play f4 and b4. And uh, anyway, it was. Well, I think that, that in this line, uh, after b6, white normally plays bishop e3, bishop b7, and f3, and then rook c1. And... Ah, gotcha. Okay. Then... Yeah. Well. Something like this. Wow. I'm a, I'm but actually... it was also possible. Okay. Yeah, we were kind of, at least I was kind of hoping to see like G4, H4, A4, and just throw all the pawns. But, I was afraid uh... of this, yes. <laughs> yeah, we, we noticed that with H5. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I was a little bit curious about the, the combination of H5 and casting kingside. Yeah, it was pretty. Is this, is this just a typical idea or? No, I, actually, uh, actually, my move uh, h5 was more yes. like prophylactic against g4 because I didn't want to castle immediately because of g4, mm -hmm. and so I played h5. And then when you did castle, you weren't concerned about h5 being a target. Well, I, I don't know. I, I felt like I would have time for the counterplay, maybe on c4 pawn or e4 pawn, mm -hmm. uh, something. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, but the position is, of course, very unclear. I mean, if white plays pre precisely, it might be slightly better for white. Maybe king h1 instead of knight d2 to, to have bishop g1 after knight g4 or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Sergey, after after 10 games and 10 wins, do you have any any takeaways or any advice you would give Nikola for, I guess, further improvement? Well, Nikola is very good in the openings. It's just completely clear. He might play sometimes more positionally. Like, I mean, for example, not to, 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 to exchange the bishop on the sixth to, 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 to double the pawn. I mean, just to play some positional moves and uh, you, you, you don't have to be creative all the time. But uh, he's playing quite well. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Sergey. I'm means. sure he would he would win next time. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. That's very greatly appreciated. I think. Uh, look, uh, you know, objectively, I had a four percent chance to avoid uh, lose getting adopted. Um, I actually definitely had chances. The best chance I think was the very first game, and there were a couple of end games that were objectively yeah. drawn. The problem with playing this uh, game 10 position is uh, I didn't have I didn't have the plan. In other words, I didn't know after I got the position I wanted around, you know, with f4, b4, bishop e3 and the rook ac1, after, after which I think I'm close to being better, if not better, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to proceed. And obviously in a blitz game, you don't have time. And against, mm -hmm. especially against somebody yeah. like Sergey. So. Yeah, you, you were completely fine. Uh, I mean, is the, that e, 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 even in the final position, if you don't play f5, you can play knight c2 and it's very complicated position. Yeah. No, f5, and, yeah, f5 uh, was a desperation move in a, in a yeah, basically yeah, lost position. 
or a lot, a lot that I didn't have time. So. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That that is what I actually wanted to tell you that you should not spend so much time because <laughs> you were in time trouble many times. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sergey. That's very greatly appreciated. Uh, Sergey was kind enough to uh, interrupt his preparations from the sub super final of the championship of Russia, which starts this weekend. I, I'm going to root for Sergey and let's hope Nepo doesn't hear me. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Nicole. Don't <laughs> clip this, guys, please. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to to the super final, and I'm looking forward to Sergey making many more appearances on Twitch and playing many more matches, which we are going to do our best to happen. We can. Uh, I think Twitch community, Twitch chess community, can only benefit from uh, having as strong players as Sergey as its part. Which was up to all the point of this match. To be very frank with guys, uh, you guys, I, I had more chances that one can hope for. Uh, so mm -hmm. thank you, Sergey, again. That's very greatly appreciated, Eric. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Very good luck. Good luck in the super final. Uh, Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, before. Maria. And yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, and uh, 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 and also to. To Eric, yeah, sorry for the nice commentary and for the nice chat. It was. It was yeah, nice no, it was super fun. Yeah, thanks to both of you for for putting on some yeah. uh, some fun games. Yeah, thank you, Eric, and uh, I am um, I'm looking forward to to more such matches, uh, guys. Just uh, and. Thank you, Maria. Maria Yemelyanova, better as photo chess. He is the one who basically arranged the most of this match. I owe her a huge debt of gratitude. Maria is preparing to play in in her own tournament for the first time after many years, oh, and we are don't all make rooting me nervous for her. Now. <laughs> yeah. And I am. Thank you, Chess on Earth, and thank you, Alessia. Oh yes, Sergey. I have. I made one promise. You know, technically, since I this is adoption, you are now my father, and there is a rich <laughs> tradition among this that I'm supposed to ask you for a Ferrari, because you know, I need a, a, you know your son oh. needs a car. It's a joke, though. Don't. Worry. <laughs> so, but I promised Alessia Santera that I'm going to ask this. Alessia, I asked. There you go. Okay. <laughs> and then next moment, Sergey just takes out the keys and like. <laughs> Take no, it. That, that, that's <laughs> that a joke. Would be, that, Alessia, that would be who is a great chess streamer and uh, Italian champion and vice champion multiple times, she has um, requested multiple Ferraris after being adopted. <laughs> so that's basically an inside joke. Anyway, guys, thank you again. Eric, thank you. Maria, I'm thank a... you. Who is going to continue to stream? Yeah. So, because I have a pretty sizable raid to send. I don't know if. Eric is going to continue, or Maria? I'm actually not sure. If if Maria is planning to stream, you should send the raid to Maria. But I will I probably guess. stay for for a bit. Okay. I okay. had to had to ignore the chat and uh, <laughs> for for a while. Uh, from my side, I also thank you all for for this wonderful evening. Well, for me, it's evening, uh, and thank you, Sergey, for for this. Uh, great lesson for all of us yes, how to stay you. cool how to how to uh manage both uh attacking side and defending side especially yeah. defending you were defending a lot today and even we had a, a question in the chat since you are a well-known uh minister of defense in one sentence how can you describe how is the best way what is the best way to proceed when you need to defend what is the main uh well, you should just keep going because uh, I know that some players uh, they they get very upset and uh, when they get bad position and they somehow collapse. But uh, just don't collapse. Uh, keep <laughs> fighting till the end. And the worst thing can happen is is that you lose the game. But if you, if you fight, then sometimes you you survive. Okay. So don't. Actually, I wanted. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to tell uh, to tell that I'm very tired after this match. <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge. Honor. I will go to, re to relax now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good sign for you, Nicola. Thank you, maybe... Sergey. That yeah, means yeah. a lot. I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> uh, 
anyway uh, again good luck in the super final and i'm gonna guys i'm i'm exhausted myself as you guys can imagine uh, a quick before we end the stream just a quick program announcement tomorrow i am playing i am having streaming my lesson with one and only elizabeth pecht uh, she's gonna give me a big speech about uh, moving pieces and uh, I, after that, I have a lesson with uh, International Master Astana Lopez, Open Field uh, uh, Arena on Saturday morning. And lastly, and this is a well-awaited match, it's a five adoption matches against one and only Alessia Santeramo, who is hell-bent on adopting me. So I have plenty of adoptions to, to face in the, this week. So thank you guys. I'm, raiding, I'm sending raid to Maria. Mm -hmm and let's see. thank you guys and we are waiting for sergey karakin twitch to appear soon <laughs> yeah uh, looking... after the super final but i promised to... yeah, yeah, let me play the super final first. yes and <laughs> yeah, i promised some extra footage of uh, sergey specifically for our communities yes. uh, definitely twitch, will... twitch community yeah. on chess can only benefit for this and i never actually told thank you eric for bringing me to online chess and chess on twitch and chess on youtube in the past couple of years so it's a pleasure Ho hopefully in, in a few months from now uh, sergey will be thanking you for bringing bringing him to twitch <laughs> I and, can uh, hope so. right. and i will thank all of you for keeping me here <laughs> and keeping right. the work for me <laughs> i'm sending the raid to maria now and then i'm gonna end the end the call thank you again bye guys yeah. okay thank you bye bye, -bye. Thank you guys Ready, a raid is coming. Uh, but there is no sound. Oh, there it is. Right, Here we are.